Lone Rifleman Kit is complete without their rifle. During World War I, the U.S. military was primarily using bolt-action rifles. The main battle rifles in use were the M1903 Springfield and the M1917 Infield. However, by the end of World War I, the U.S. military made the M1903 their primary battle rifle. Even with this as the case, they were interested in research for a semi-automatic replacement. The M1 rifle would become the most common firearm in use by the USGIs on World War II battlefields. Known today as the M1 Garand after its manufacturer, John C. Garand, it was one of the first semi-automatic rifles to be fully adopted by a military. Although other countries had developed semi-automatic firearms long before this, none of them were made standard issue. John Guerin had been working to develop a semi-auto rifle since the end of World War I. With several years of prototypes, trials, and modifications, his rifle would finally be standardized by the U.S. military in 1936 and would start being manufactured the following year. By 1938, the first batch of rifles were being issued. However, by 1940, the military had made a number of new changes and retrofitted their existing rifles with these changes. They were primarily fitted with a modified gas port system, replacing John Guerin's original gas trap system. For more information on the gas trap system, you can watch a video about them on the YouTube channel Forgotten Weapons. Moving back, by America's entrance into World War II, the M1 rifle started getting put into extreme large-scale production. The first version had one glaring difference that would be changed as the war progressed. The rear sight has a nut on the right knob. This nut, when loosened, allows you to adjust the placement of the sight. When tightened, it would be flush with the surface of the knob, making it known as the flush nut sight. By 1942, they had changed the nut to a lock bar. This lock bar would be the staple of the M1 rifle for the remainder of its service in World War II. The lock bar proved to be a much more effective system, loosening the sight adjustment with the flick of a finger. There would be three types of these lock bars manufactured, but all three would have the same fundamental concept. After the war, the rifle would change from the lock bar back to the concept of a nut. Another part of the rifle that's solely unique to the World War II M1 Garand is the trigger guard. World War II variants had a trigger guard that was made from milled steel with a hole in the rear to assist in the disassembly process. After the war, however, they would switch from a milled trigger guard to one that was stamped into the required shape. On the gas cylinder, you can find a lug. This is a bayonet lug that is used to lock your bayonet onto your rifle, which is encouraged to be bought with your rifle. On top of the cylinder can be found a gas plug. For most of the war, the plug used a single slot for disassembly, but later on in the war, they started changing their plugs to a crossed slot design. This was meant for the new M7 rifle grenade adapter. Along with your new rifle, a sling should be added to your shopping list. It is strongly recommended to start by buying yourself a leather sling. These slings were used for the large majority of the war. Canvas slings would see use in 1943, however they would not appear in large numbers until late in the war. At the front has a very decent selection of rifle slings for you to choose from, as well as other sites such as World War Supply. During the war there were two manufacturers of the M1 Garand, Springfield Armory and Winchester Repeating Arms. Springfield made the majority of rifles, having made 3.5 million. Winchester made only around 500,000. There are a few ways to identify the makers of these rifles, such as the manufacturer stamps all along them. Winchester has a few other changes, such as the change in appearance of the op rod and identifying marks along the stock. Other manufacturers would make them after the war. Most notably were International Harvester and Harrington and & Richards or h and &R. The M1 rifle was a gas-operated semi-automatic rifle using a long-stroke gas system. The rifle used eight round on-block clips inserted into an internal magazine. After firing each round, the shell casing would automatically eject from the receiver with the assistance of the gas blowback. As a reenactor, however, you are only shooting blank rounds. There is not as much pressure going through the rifle and therefore it will not cycle. To combat this, you will have to buy yourself a blank adapter for your firearm. You can find surplus blank adapters for relatively cheap, however, they have an extremely noticeable profile. The best blank adapters on the market are known as the POPS adapters. 
These adapters have a much more subtle profile compared to their surplus counterparts. In addition, these adapters can be adjusted to however hot your blanks are. It is critical to take into account how much powder is in your blanks, as too much powder with too small of a hole could lead to damage on your rifle. You can find these adapters on such websites like Atlantic Wall and Ravenna Armory. Now that you've gotten these out of the way, where can these firearms be acquired? Well, there's a number of ways these rifles can be obtained. Before discussing this, it is important to note that not all gun laws are the same depending on where you reside in the United States. So before making any purchases, read up on your local gun laws in order to ensure that you are acquiring these legally. In the plethora of ways of acquiring an M1 rifle, you have the option of purchasing it online through such websites as Gun Broker, where they are being sold at a very high volume. There is also the option of local gun shops and gun shows, as they are very popular firearms to come across. They can also be acquired through the Civilian Marksmanship Program for a very affordable price, although there are certain requirements you must meet before being able to purchase one. You can find out how on their website. A final way to acquire them is through buying the parts over time and building it yourself. However, once again, it is important to stress to look into your local gun laws to ensure that you are in fact able to acquire it through these means. While on this topic, it is also important to stress that these are not toys. These are real firearms with the capability of causing serious injury or death to you or those around you. So with this in mind, ensure that you are implementing proper firearm etiquette. Your rifle is to be pointed upwards, away from other people, or utilizing the sling to keep it tucked safely behind your back. Keep your finger away from the trigger when not in combat scenarios. And when in combat scenarios, do not fire your rifle in the direction of somebody who is within 25 feet of you. Instead, you can either yell bang or fire your rifle directly up into the air. At the end of any combat scenario, you must ensure that your rifle is cleared. To clear your M1, simply pull the bolt back and push the ejector button on the side. Close your bolt and for added measure, activate the weapon's safety. Using firearms is no joke and must be treated with the utmost respect. We will go further in depth on weapon care and safety in a future video. For those of you who may have a harder time acquiring one, many units will typically be willing to spare a loaner rifle for you to become accustomed to. For viewers not residing in the United States, or those who are simply unable to own a firearm, there are alternative routes. The Spain-based company Denex makes non-firing replica M1 rifles. These are a fine alternative as they certainly look the part and help fill in that glaring gap you may have with your impression. No matter where the US military went, the rifles went with them to those who needed them, making M1 Garands the final piece of your basic kit that you were going to need. These rifles were the backbone of the armed forces and therefore are the backbone of your impression. With that being said, we hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to stay tuned for future episodes. And remember, you're in the army now. You're not behind the plow. You'll never get rich by digging a ditch. You're in the army now. You're in the army now. You're in the army now. You'll never get rich on the salary which you get in the army now. 